Today you're going to learn how to make Hong Kong style egg bubble waffle. Hey guys, I'm Kristen, the bubble tea queen, and welcome to my channel. Welcome to this special series on how to make boba shop recipes using bubble tea shop restaurant quality grade ingredients. Egg bubble waffle is super popular and my recipe from Hong Kong is one of a kind. I can't wait for you to try it. So today we're going to make a big recipe that yields nine bubble waffles. Great for a party or a shop. But I'm also going to put down in the description a recipe for six and three. To be fair, if you just want one, unfortunately the smallest recipe that you can do will be three. The recipe is very different than other waffle recipes that you might know of or have tried. Not only is the look of bubble waffle very different, but the actual ingredients that are in it are very unique as well. First, we're going to be measuring in the dry ingredients. You're going to need three different containers for measuring all of the ingredients into. I'm going to use this one today for my dry ingredients this one for the beginning of my wet ingredients, and then when I combine my wet and dry, I will be using my larger container right here. First, we're going to measure 420 grams of the plain flour into our dry container. We want to hit tear and make sure that it says zero and grams. Next, we need 22.5 grams of baking powder. So what we're gonna do again is hit tear back to zero, and then slowly, because 22.5 grams isn't that much, slowly pour in to the right amount. Now obviously most scales aren't gonna do 22.5 grams, so what you wanna do is get it up to 22 and add just a little more, but not up to 23, of course. Next, we want 21 grams of custard powder. Again, we're gonna hit tear and get it back to zero grams. Now, you could do this in teaspoons and tablespoons, but the thing is, each of the powders weighs a different amount. So we could say, oh, one tablespoon of this, one tablespoon of that, but in grams, that would actually be quite different. So that's why we're doing this in weight and grams. It's more of an exact measurement, and it gives us a really good turnout every time. Next, we're going to do 84 grams of tapioca flour. Now, some people might call it tapioca starch, but generally, if you go to the market or you find it online, it will come in a smaller container as opposed to plain flour, which tends to come in a larger container, usually because you end up not really using that much in majority of your recipes. And before this next step, again, you just wanna hit the tear button and get your item back to zero grams. Now we're going to do the eggs and the sugar in the smaller bowl. For this recipe, we're going to be using six eggs and 420 grams of white sugar. It doesn't really matter if you put the eggs in first or the white sugar in first. Again, you just wanna make sure that you tear before you put the sugar in, and then that way, no matter what, you'll be getting the correct measurement of the 420 grams. So for this video, I'm gonna go ahead and put the eggs in first, and then my white sugar. But we will be straining this, so don't worry if you're afraid of perhaps getting any eggshells in it, it will be strained twice. Because this is an egg waffle recipe, I tend to go for the large eggs and if possible, free range. Now I'm going to put in my 420 grams of the white sugar. Again, I want to tear it and make sure it's on zero and grams, and then I can go ahead and put my sugar in. And now I'm going to use my handheld electric whisk and I'm going to whisk this on low for two and a half minutes. We really wanna make sure that all of the sugar is combined with the egg and has a chance to kind of break down a bit. As you can see, this looks really nice. Very thick, 
and creamy. And because we used free range eggs, it has a really nice dark orange color to it, which became light, of course, with the sugar and the whipping, and it will give it a really nice color when we actually make the waffle. I'm just going to put my handheld whisk off to the side real quick. And we're gonna transfer this and sieve it into the larger bowl and then add the dry ingredients. Now, one thing that's important to remember, anytime you get eggs on anything, you always wanna make sure to wipe it down with a disinfectant. And also for your hands, if you ever get a hold of the eggs or like when you're cracking them, if you happen to get egg on your hand, if you're not using gloves, you wanna make sure that you use warm, soapy water just to make sure that there's no bacteria that's spread from item to item, especially when you're in a working environment like this. Very important with eggs. Now, when we move on to the oil, which you'll see in just a second, again, we just wanna to make sure that we use warm soapy water or hot soapy water if you have access to it to make sure that the oil breaks down and then that will allow for longevity of your counters and all of your items. There won't be that dirty buildup over time. So it's just best to use disinfectant and soap and water for everything, no matter what, of course. I have two different restaurant quality grade sieves that I only use for bubble waffle, all right? So the first one I'm going to be using to strain the egg and sugar mixer that I just whipped up. And the second one I'm going to be using at the very end to strain all the whole mixture into our actual container itself. Now, if you've seen my other video, you know that I have larger metal sieves that I use for straining the tea. Those are completely for tea only, and these are completely for the egg and oil mixture only. Because again, we don't want any cross-contamination of any sort, um, especially at any point ever. So it's always good to make sure that you have two sieves for this, two sieves for that, keep it separate, no cross-contamination, and then you're good. All right, so I'm going to strain my egg and sugar mixture into my larger bowl now, which again, I'm going to be pouring in my dry ingredients in just a moment. So let's give this a go. See, so you can see in the sieve how it caught um, like this little thing here, maybe a little eggshell, some random large pieces of sugar that didn't break up correctly. Um, so it's really good to make sure that you do this first step before you add your dry ingredients. Now I'm going to pop these into my sink with hot soapy water and just let them hang out while I'm doing this next step until I get a chance, of course, to completely clean them off later. Now we're going to tear this again back to zero and grams, and we're gonna pour in 84 grams of evaporated milk. Any evaporated milk that is left in the can, be sure to transfer it into a small airtight container so you can use it later. Uh, never leave it in the metal container, especially when you're in a restaurant or shop environment, because if the health and safety come in and they see that you've got something open in a can, um, that will definitely get docked against you. I'm going to hit tear again, back to zero grams. We're gonna add 420 grams of water. It ends up being about 420 milliliters, but again, we're going for measurements, so we're gonna do 420 grams. Going to hit tear again, zero grams, and 84 grams of vegetable oil. And last but not least, for the wet ingredients, we have one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. And you know, I don't usually do it as an exact measurement. I just kind of throw it in there, I kind of approximate it. But of course, if you have staff members who are doing this exact, you wanna make sure that you supply them with a teaspoon and a half teaspoon, and then that way they can measure it in correctly. So I'm going to remove my scale, and we're gonna slowly start pouring our dry ingredients into this while we're whisking. We wanna make sure that we don't get any clumps, um, that everything is mixing really, really well. Once everything is mixed really well together and there are no clumps, then we wanna go ahead and make sure we whisk it for a full two and a half minutes before we strain it. All right, so I've got my whisk and I got my dry ingredients. Here we go.
I'm going to eject my little whisk bits there, put them in the hot soapy water in the sink, disconnect my whisk itself and make sure to give it a good wipe down, make sure it's clean for the next use. And now I'm going to use my other sieve and put the waffle mix into these jugs. Once these jugs are about halfway to three quarters full, I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on and date stamp them. This waffle mix will last for about three days maximum. It's got fresh eggs, it's got the evaporated milk. You don't wanna let it go longer than that uh, because there's a good chance that there would be a growth of bacteria. Um, so we just wanna make sure that you only make enough for your shop or for your home use that you're going to be using or eating within the next three days. When you're done whisking your bubble waffle, you wanna make sure to leave it in the fridge for a minimum of an hour. This gives it an opportunity to kind of get a little thicker in consistency. If you pour it directly onto here, it's gonna be quite thin and very, very runny, and it's not gonna be that fullness when you cook it. So definitely make sure that you have your staff either make it first thing in the morning so it has a chance to cool in the refrigerator for an hour, or have them make it at night, the night before. That way it gets nice and cold and thick. That way it's ready to go as soon as you open the next morning. Your results will be much different. A very good, dramatic difference please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I bring you a brand new drink video every week and I would love for you to be part of the YouTube family. See you soon.